with the material that was just covered in the previous section, you should be able to model, compute the complex visibility of any model you really wish. I would, however, like to take a little bit of extra time to focus on one aspect of the complex visibility, real or modeled, that we, don't, we haven't really talked much about yet, and that is, of course, the phase. I would like to go back to the three building bricks that we've introduced before, namely the ring, the uniform disk, and the Gaussian disk. I want to remind you that what makes them particularly useful and particularly nice is the fact that the complex visibility associated to each of these typical structures has a very nice analytical expression. And if you're familiar and able to quickly associate it, the shape of the visibility curve uh, associated to each of these functions, then uh, it gives you um, uh, an advantage uh, and makes you uh, able to read a little faster um, a given set of observations. I will just pick uh, the uniform disk among those three to, uh, and discuss uh, some of its uh, specificities. Uh, the uniform disk, after all, is one of the most commonly used uh, models when it comes to... This is one of the first type of, observer, of model fitting that we're going to process when uh, looking at actual observations. The first thing I'd like to point out looking at this curve is the fact that this is a one-dimensional representation, uh, a radial cut of what we know in practice is going to be a function of two coordinates, the u and the v coordinates, spatially extended structure. And um, so this uh, 1D representation actually, of course, has an actual um, 2D counterpart representation, which is a 2D extended function that is um, evolving in that space of uh, u and v coordinates, what we call the uv plane. The second feature I'd like to focus on here is what I've highlighted here on the screen with this uh, blue circle. The fact that in some places the visibility function can actually take negative values. A negative value, if you think in terms of complex numbers also thinks that you have positive amplitude because the amplitude, the modulus of a complex number is of course always positive, but a phase that is going to be equal to uh, plus or minus pi. And so if we go back to our 2D representation here and split it into two parts uh, where we look at separately at the uh, amplitude and the phase, where well, we see that the amplitude maps look, looks exactly like what I had before, because this is of course what I've been using all this time when I want to represent the visibility function of just display, plot the modulus. Uh, the phase, on the other hand, uh, has a somewhat different uh, aspect. Uh, what we see is that it is essentially made up of a series of concentric structures, in that case, very much like the amplitude. However, uh, what we see is that uh, the phase is very uniform over the extent of uh, a given structure here. And uh, those concentric structures here have um, uniform uh, values within each of the, uh, the, the rings that surround the, the central region here. Is that particularly useful? I'd like to um, take a little um, picture here. It's a classical image that is, is used in a lot of uh, image processing uh, textbooks. And what I'm simply doing here is taking that image and computing its Fourier transform and isolate the two parts of this image, the amplitude at the top and the phase at the bottom. Now we know that the Fourier transform is a reversible operation, which means that if we were to take the inverse Fourier transform of these two things together, we would, of course, recover the original uh, object itself. 
I want to show you how important the phase part of the information actually is here. Um, if you were to qualitatively look at the amplitude and the phase, um, it would be pretty easy to believe that the phase is a really messy place that doesn't seem to feature much of information except a lot of uh, high special frequency noise. We can see a lot of very fast fluctuations in, this, in the phase space of that, of that image. On the other hand, if we were to look at the amplitude, where we do see some low special frequency modulation, some brighter, clearly brighter uh, features toward the center, and some structure that would make us think that a lot of the key information happens to be in the amplitude itself. So let's run a little experiment here and reprocess, compute the inverse Fourier transform of that system, uh, but erasing the phase information. Uh, this is what the, uh, Fourier, the inverse Fourier transform ends up looking like now. Clearly, our image is gone, and uh, it is actually very hard to understand any of what we're looking at, simply by looking at this Fourier transform here. If we were to do the opposite, however, and keep the phase and ditch all of the amplitudes, well, this is what you actually see here. And um, what you see is that all of the contour information contained in the original image is still present here. We seem to have lost some of the information about uh, the uniform, the semi-uniform uh, uh, illuminated structures. However, all of the contours, all of what you need to uh, be able to look at this image and understand what it is you're looking at happens to be contained in the phase information. So if you were really wondering, yes, the phase information happens to be very, very important in our business. If we go back to uh, what the phase in uh, structure looks like for a uniform disk, this is what we have. We have a series of concentric structures and what we see is that no matter where we look at, no matter where we look in the UV plane, the phase that we're going to sample is always going to be zero or pi. Now, if you remember some of the things that we've seen in previous sections, you may remember that we anyways never get access to the phase information. In the optical, we are plagued by the presence of the atmosphere that messes up our, our, our phase information all the time, and so we never get access to it. What we do get access to, however, is what we've uh, presented as the closure phase. If you were, despite the fact that we have the atmosphere, if we were able to sample the UV uh, phase in three different places and uh, add it up so that uh, the, the three pieces of phase information form a closing triangle along uh, the, the original uh, pupil or array, and then we are able to form a meaningful quantity that we've called the closure phase. Now let's look at uh, what this closure phase would actually look like. The fact that no matter where uh, you would sample the phase moving baselines around in the UV plane, the only values you're going to be able to get access to are always going to be pi or zero, which means that you can combine uh, zeros or pi's or zeros and pi's together. No matter how you organize yourself, you're, the closure phase you're going to record on the system like this is always going to be uh, zero or pi, which um, you know simply means that the phase information doesn't look all that interesting uh, for uh, when dealing with an object like this. What I also remind in the previous video, however, is that um, phase do seems to occur when you deal with objects that are not located on axis. And uh, I remind you here the expression for what I call the translation property of the Fourier transform. That is, if you're looking at a structure that is not dead center but slightly off to the side, what that ends up producing is um, multiplying the, uh, the visibility function by some complex exponential function, 
which means that uh, because it's complex exponential is of modulus one, that's not going to introduce any signature on the uh, visibility modulus, but that uh, is actually going to induce some structure, overall structure of the phase sample uh, in the UV plane. And so here is one example here where the object is not too far off to the side and this is what it looks like when it begins to go farther away. We saw that as you go far away off center, you uh, introduce faster and faster modulations. We see that the phase, of course, seems to, mo to be modulated by this, but uh, again, uh, because the, this is a, a complex exponential term purely, uh, we don't introduce any uh, change in the modulus of that function, which means that um, um, our visibility is not really perturbed. Now here's something to think about. When I'm talking about an object that is slightly off-center, what does that really mean? Does that mean that the object indeed is off-center? Or does it mean that my interferometer is simply pointing at a, in the wrong direction, essentially? We are actually not able to tell one from the other, uh, which means that this is not quite a situation where the phase information will actually uh, prove uh, usable. It's the phase information is actually going to prove usable when we begin to deal with objects made of several components and where we are sure at least one of these objects is um, properly centered on our, on our um, equipment. And we therefore need to introduce a fourth uh, building brick for our system and that system is going to be the uh, binary system, which is, you can think of as a hybrid of um, um, the uh, two, uh, of two uniform disk systems separated by some distance. But let's consider it separately as, a, as its own uh, typical structure. And let's do a tally of what uh, parameters you need to involve in order to uh, provide a full description of that binary system. Well, binary system, of course, is characterized by uh, the fact that it's made up of two stars, which means that we're going to have two angular diameters, one for each star. This is going to be uh, characterized by the fact that there may be a difference in the brightness uh, of the two objects. So we're, we're going to introduce some extra parameter that we'll call the contrast ratio. Um, we're also going to require a piece of information that quantifies how far apart the two components are. We're going to call that the angular separation, quite naturally. And finally, we need to be able to tell uh, the orientation of that object on sky. And so we're going to have one additional parameter that is going to be the position angle. So if you think about it, this is beginning to get um, a more complex uh, system. And this is typically what the uh, amplitude and the phase uh, part of the complex visibility would look like on such a system uh, that would be uh, a binary system of equal brightness. So the two components here are of equal brightness. There's a couple of features to this um, uh, plot that I would like to point you out. And so I'm going to zoom into the uh, amplitude uh, part of that plot. And we, we, if you begin to get familiar with those things, you may recognize a couple of features. The first thing you recognize is uh, we do recognize the original uh, ring-like structure that, was, that is induced by the presence of a uniform disk. And uh, for this system here, I've picked uh, two um, components that are of equal angular diameter. And so we recognize, we see the signature of the angular diameter in the form of the series of uh, rings that we observe in the UV plane. But on top of that, what we see is we have this additional modulation of uh, the function. Um, and that modulation is characteristic 
of the presence of a binary companion, the um, further away the two components are going to be, the faster that modulation is going to be because we are uh, resolving more and more the uh, separation between the two objects and so uh, we actually observe more and more modulations. Now this is for a binary uh, system of uh, equal brightness. Um, the second part to this is of course the um, the phase part of the information and uh, if we look at the phase map that is associated to this object we see that once again it is characterized by uh, uniformly um, uniform regions where the phase happens to again oscillate between strictly zero and pi values which means that again even if we were to introduce here um, the closure phase trick to in order to get access to the phase information the only thing we would get out of that analysis is a value between zero um, and pi things change when you introduce um, some uh, symmetry in the system and the way I think of a symmetry is for example by uh, making one of the two members of that binary system fainter than the other or brighter depending on which way you want to look at things now if you do so there's a couple features that change uh, what you see if you look at the map of amplitude is that the higher contrast between the two uh, companions makes that the modulation on the visibility modulus is much lower than previously. What that means is that if you are just focusing on visibilities, uh, the modulus of visibility to pinpoint a binary companion, the higher the contrast ratio between the two, the more difficult that um, the detection would actually be. On the other hand, if you look at the phase part, uh, the phase diagram, uh, what you see is that suddenly we see a lot more, a, lo uh, a lot more faster evolution of the phase as you go in the UV plane. And in fact, that modulation is very strong when uh, the um, when the uh, symmetry, the, the contrast between the two uh, systems. Uh, is uh, important and so this is really one of the key application to uh, using the phase and the closure phase um, this observable the closure phase is going to be particularly good at uh, pinpointing asymmetries in our objects and uh, a binary system is going to be uh, characterized by uh, an asymmetric binary system is going to be characterized by a weak amplitude modulation but a very strong phase uh, or closure phase signature and uh, before we finish this I would like to uh, show you something that we've already looked at before that is a picture uh, an image produced from interferometric measurement of this uh, now famous system the calcium 15 which is um, which is an image uh, that was produced by interferometry and uh, here we have two images of interferometry one in the submillimetric which we won't talk too much about but this one right here this is a series uh, this is a combination of images in the in the K and the L band so we're talking about near infrared uh, observations that were and those images were solely reconstructed from uh, using uh, closure phases and what these closure phases were able to reveal were the, was the presence of a weak companion uh, around a bright star uh, uh, surrounded by some uh, colder material. So this is a very beautiful application of the, um, the use of closure phase here. Uh, you can actually use that uh, to sense weak asymmetric structures um, and that would include um, uh, planets, extrasolar planets around bright stars.